Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, we got no problems. Shield volcanoes. These are the Uzi volcanoes. These are the ones they are going to have a shape. It's going to look like this. And they've got lava flow over lava flow over lava flow over lava flow because, of course, it's, it's not very viscous, so it's, it's more watery. I mean, the images you see is a slow-moving lava field, which is true, but that's compared to uh, the Explodicons, and they go much, much farther. By the way, the slope of this, make a note here, the slope is between 2 to 3 degrees. It's a slope, right? The slope of the line, right? If you were to, like, measure the slope. Remember this in geometry class. Very, very, not, it'd be easy to hike this mountain if it didn't have lava flows because it would not be a very steep climb, all right? Uh, now, one thing about uh, shield volcanoes that happen is they almost have continuous eruptions. They're constantly erupting and erupting. There's not like a gap. You'll find with a, with a composite volcano, there's gaps where you wait, and all of a sudden, boom, it goes. But in a shield volcano, they're continuously erupting. And again, the classic one that everyone talks about is uh, the one on Hawaii, the big island of Hawaii. It's continuously erupting over and over and over again, and the lava flows keep growing and growing and growing. And as a note, with these continuous eruptions, that then can cover a large area. I mean, it can just go forever. It, it, Hawaii is actually, the, the, the uh, Kilauea on Hawaii is actually taller or very close to the same height as, as Mount Everest, if you take from the bottom of the ocean. But what are some other characteristics of shield volcanoes? Um, the, the least of the lava. We'll talk about the lava here. Lava. It travels far. This is the lava before solidifying. So it goes a long, long way. Sometimes it hits the ocean. <laughs> That's awesome, by the way. Um, well, it often goes to the ocean. And when it hits the ocean, it makes a really cool uh, type of lava they call pillow lava. Looks like pillows. It freezes on the outside so quick, and then the inside doesn't. It's like these big balls. It's awesome. And I think one of the coolest things you can see at one of these is called a lava tube. Now, a lava tube is, is really cool. So let's take a look at a, a, a lava tube. So how does a lava tube form? So in the image that you're now looking at, notice what you've got is you've got stuff solidifying on the outside because it's cooler on the outside. And then the lava continues to flow through the, the bottom. And then when it all solidifies, or through the, the center, if you will, and when it's all done, you're left with, boom, the lava tube. So you can climb through these. There's, some of these are miles and miles long, lava tubes. And they're created because the lava, again, is highly... Uh, or not highly, lowly viscous, it's not very viscous, and so it is, it is, uh, it's thin, if you will, and so it flows so quickly that the lava tubes are formed. So a fascinating thing, maybe you've had a chance to go visit Hawaii, some of you maybe, and you have seen uh, the shield volcano that's there. What a fascinating thing. I, I have not visited it. I, I've been in a lava tube from an old distinct, extinct uh, volcano, and it was, it was pretty awesome. So, shield volcanoes, Houston, no problem.